So welcome everyone today to Psalms Through the Eyes of the Living Letters. And today we're going to be uh, going through Psalm 119. Again, uh, I believe this one's 89 through uh, 89 through 96. Is that right? Yeah, 89 through 96. Now, this is the section in Psalm 119 where we're going to be talking about the living letter Lamed. So these next eight verses all begin with the living letter Lamed as far as the sentence is concerned in these scriptures. And I'm as I've been meditating on this, Father's really begun to do something he usually does, messes with me. <laughs> and, and I have been really excited about uh, about all of this. You know, and it's funny because when you when you think about Lamed, you also think about the place. See, Lamed in its most literal sense talks about a shepherd's hook. And so it's a letter that speaks about authority, and it's a letter also that speaks about caring. So it's not just an authority in the sense of, you know, a dictatorship or a rulership where, where someone is, you know, it's 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 the a stern hand. Lamed can be a stern hand. I don't want to diminish it from that. But at the same time, it's also that place of caring. It, it's the picture of the shepherd who who brings the sheep in from the day. And as he and as he does, he he actually brings the shepherd and they walk through his legs, walk right between his legs. And as they do, he takes he allows them to go through and he looks over every part of their body. And he's got a little jar of salve that, 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 that's with him at all times. And if he finds a place on the lamb or on the sheep that, that is, is, has been hurt or that sort of thing, he'll rub the salve, salve in that wound and he'll put salve in their eyes. He'll, he'll take and make sure that those things that are, are irritating them and that's stuck on the wool are removed during that time. So it's a place of caring as well when we look at the picture. And uh, I don't normally do this in here, at least at least not on the recording. But um, my wife called me a little bit ago, and and I would like to ask for prayer for not only my my wife's mom and dad. They've they've got some uh, physical issues that they're dealing with right at the moment, and I would love to for you guys to pray with us with regards to that. Um, they're they're both very strong willed and very uh, very strong people. They're They've they've they're a little bit younger than my mom is, but so they're their late seventies, uh, but uh, just not doing real well physically. There's some things going on, so I'd ask for your prayer. And my mom just had surgery yesterday, as well. She had uh, a knee replaced, and she's uh, she'll be eighty in December, and she's still <laughs> that my mom. You got to watch out for because uh, because she's she is a pistol. She's a fireball, and. Now that she's gotten her knee fixed and she's able to get up and move around a little bit more, like more, more uh, she's going to be go all the time. So I would appreciate y'all's prayer in speaking about this place since we're talking about caring anyway. And uh, I love you guys and I appreciate it. When we when we do these things, if you need prayer, if you've got someone who needs prayer at the at the time where we have for our engagement, I would love for you to bring that up at that time. So that we can all pray together and 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 go from there. But Lamed, Lamed is also a letter that that speaks about more than just authority and that place of caring. But when we start thinking about authority, we also think about the place where where as one who is older and we've gone through things and seen things, and and we we have the wisdom of the Father. See, I love this because wisdom is not just uh, experiential. Although one of the key aspects of wisdom is the experiential wisdom. And, and the older we get, of course, the more we go through things, the more we learn how to walk through things. Now, the, that wisdom, even though it is experiential, still comes from the Father. Because he's the one that carries us through these places where we learn. And, and he's there right there with us during that time as we begin to learn of what he's what he's showing us, and we learn experiential wisdom from him. But at the same time, sometimes there's this place of wisdom that's that that's dropped in, if you will. It's like a it's like a a gift of wisdom. It's it's something that's beyond our experience, where the father speaks something that's like a oh, and it begins to allow us to see another aspect of something that we've never seen before. 
you know, so there's, I, I love both of this. I, I don't have time to talk about that aspect of wisdom, but when we talk about Lamed, especially the other part of Lamed, Lamed means teaching and learning as well. So I can't help talk about teaching and learning if I don't bring up the place of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Each one of those threes are those three are a key part of what learning and teaching is all about. And uh, anyway, I've got a, I've got a teaching that I've done on that with regards to wisdom and and the do, the two different ways that wisdom can come and and how it expresses itself. And for me, it's helped me a lot because because then I I realize the path that the Father is taking me on. If this is experiential wisdom, it usually comes from knowledge first. And then it works its way to wisdom. But when it comes from the father, it works the other way around. It comes from wisdom to understanding to knowledge. And, and, it, and it teaches us something that we never knew before. Anyway, enough about that. I'll, I'll get into, I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get stirred up and get preaching on that and not get into Psalm 119. And I don't want to do that. But so Lamed speaks about this place of, of just that, of learning and teaching. And and David has said this over and over and over again, but I want to walk through today's psalm a little bit slower than we normally do. Usually, I read it all the way through, and then uh, and then go back and 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 hit some key points. Today, I'm going to not do that. I'm just going to go and read each section because there's some key things that I want to point out as we go through it today. So the first part of Psalm one one nineteen says this, and uh. I'm going to show you the uh, the uh, the the Tahalim in uh, on in here, but I'm actually not going to read out of the Art Scroll series uh, application. There, they have they have slightly changed the way that it's written in this application to make it more understandable. It doesn't change anything. Uh, you know, because the words they use are still pretty much the same between the version that I have here, the book version, and the uh, uh, application version, the app version that you guys are seeing right now on the screen. But I want to read this out of the book today, so it's gonna it's gonna have a different order when we go through it. Uh, mainly because for me, I love having the Hebrew right above it. So the Tehillim book, you can if you guys are wanting to. To find uh, this book, it's it's going to be in the links below in the recordings, and it's going to be the Art Scroll series Schottenstein edition of the Tahalim. And uh, uh, I love this because when you read Hebrew, it's written right to left. And so when you read this English, you have to read the English right to left as well. And the only way that I can explain it is by the book, and you'll see what I'm talking about, because it'll take you a little bit before you can get the, the flow of how it's supposed to work. But it's got the Hebrew word right above it. So there you go. So the the, the first verse in, in Psalm 119, verse 89, says this. Forever, Hashem, your word stands in the heavens. Forever. La olam. Now, the Hebrew word olam is a Hebrew word that many of you may have heard when, uh, especially with like Apostle Aaron, he one of his favorite, uh, his favorite statements is, uh, chai olam. Now he says it kaye olam, and which is fine. It's 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 the it's his Eber way of saying it. Uh, that's that's not the proper Hebrew, and he knows that. But you know he he's he speaks it in the way that the Lord gave it to him, and I I love that Apostle Aaron because uh, uh, anyway it's it's it, he used to go around saying all the time uh, yippee kaye olam, you know. And uh, anyway, sorry, just just kind of joking there, or just remembering some of the things that he used to say all the time. But this uh, this Hebrew word forever here, and when it speaks about olam, speaks about the place of not just not necessarily just forever, but eternity or infinity. And I, I love this because when we look at it by the Hebrew living letters, it's uh, uh, ayin vav lamed mem is the Hebrew word olam. The lamed here is a, uh, that, that's in the beginning of this, is actually a uh, prefix that means two or four, and uh, but it's it's speaking about. I love this because when you think about this and look at it from the living letters, ayin is a letter that speaks of revelation. It speaks of seeing. The vav 
talks about the connection to. The Lamed, of course, we know means, means not only the place of learning and teaching, but also authority. And then the Mem, and in this case, it's the Mem Sofit, because it's the end of the Hebrew word. The Mem talks about the fullness of Yahweh. So when we speak of Olam, looking at it from the living letters perspective, what I see is what the Father shows us, what we see by the Spirit connects us to the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding, the teaching of our Father that brings us into his fullness. So that's the secret, the hidden part of what Olam talks about. Now, I love this because Olam is also translated as world in many cases. So you may see in Scripture where, where there's the Hebrew word or the, the English word world, it may be the Hebrew word olam that's that's there. So that means there's a secret hidden there when you see it. Your word stands firm. I love this word stands firm because it's the Hebrew word nitzav, nitzav, and it's spelled nun, zadi, and bait. Uh, in this case, the bait has a v sound because bait has two different sounds, a b and a v sound. I guess you can tell tonight, today I'm in a little bit more of a teaching mode. So I hope you guys are, are, are good with me walking through this in this teaching aspect. But Nitzav, when it speaks about the place of being firm and standing firm, I love this because Nun is a letter that speaks about being a son, a king, an heir or a priest. And it, so it's, it's talking about who we are. It also speaks about the humbled servant or the humbled um, the humbled, yeah, the humbled son, the humbled servant. And uh, so it also represents Yeshua. Zadi, oh man, Zadi is, is a letter that really resonates heavily with my, my spirit man, because it speaks about the place of righteousness. And it literally means righteousness. So Zadi is, uh, is many of you may have heard this before, but when we talk about Melchizedek, the middle of Melchizedek's name is the, is the Zadi. So you may have even heard about Zadok. And Zadok was not, not, not Melchizedek. Zadok was one of Levi's sons. And, uh, but he, he did things a little bit differently than Levi did. Levi went from the people, heard what the people were saying, and then took their issues and the problems from the people to the Lord to get an answer. Zadok, on the other hand, looked to the face of the father he ministered to him, and he says, I want to hear what you are saying, Father. And then he would go back to the people and tell the people what he heard the Father say. Why do you think that Yeshua, and it was said of Yeshua, that he was after the order of Melchizedek, Melech Zadok? You see, Melchizedek can also be spelled Melech, which is the Hebrew word for king, and Zadok, one who looks to the face of the Father and then speaks from that place of the Father. So you see, it's, oh man, I'm, I'm getting chili bumps just thinking about that. And that's, that's who the Father has made us to be. We, in Yeshua, are also after the order of Melchizedek. We, we look to the face of the Father and hear what he says. We don't listen to what the world has to say and then go to the world, go to the Father with the world's problems. No, we go to the Father and find the answer to those things. So the last letter in Netz, uh, Nitzav is Beit. So it's it's a place of the house, the place of communion, the place of togetherness. So when it talks about uh, standing firm. It's talking about, see, Zadi, let me go back to Zadi just a moment, because when it speaks of righteousness, to me, it also speaks of identity and who we are. So when I look at this as a whole, I see a son who stands in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and who knows who he is, is able to be in that place of the, of the firm foundation and the, the, the house of the Lord, where he's at home all the time, if you will. It, he's, he's in constant communion with the Father. So to me, it, all three of these letters begin to, to show us why it is that we can even stand firm in the first place. We've identified ourselves as a son. 
We've been identified as being righteous. And we've also been identified of being in the house. And it's just like a kid who comes in from the, it's like a, a child who comes in and is thirsty after a good day of play. They don't necessarily have to go to mom and daddy and say, hey, can I have a glass of water? You know, they can just go grab a glass, you know, uh, pour some water in from the fridge and drink, right? No parent would stop a child from being able to do that. If they're thirsty, let them go in and drink, right? And so th this is kind of the thing it talks about. When, when I know who I am, then I can walk in this place of the firmness of, of the foundation of being in him. And his word now, so he's talking about his word. His word stands firm in the heavens. So this whole sentence is speaking about the place of the father's words. The words that he speaks are a firm foundation. There's something that we can grab a hold of and not let go of and always be in the right place. You see what I'm saying? Because his word is a firm foundation. Oh, I love this. Lador vador emanatecha. From generation to generation is your faithfulness. From generation to generation is your faithfulness. I love this because the 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 lamed and the vav between the lador, the lamed dot dalit resh, the lamed there is actually a prefix. So the 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 word here is door, dalit and resh. And the reason I know it's door because if you look in the Hebrew, there's a little symbol up there that that gives that tells me it's an o sound. Uh, so there's not it's not three letters; it's only two letters. It's a two letter. And I don't like the, the in Hebrew, whenever you see a, 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 a I don't want to call it a root because it actually has two different names. If you see three letters, it's a root word. But if you see two letters, like we have here, Dalit and Resh, it's what they call a seed word. It's called a seed word. And in that place, it, it, it begins to express that place of, of, of the opportunity or the potential. So every generation has the potential of being able to move beyond and to go beyond the previous generation. Hence the reason why it says from generation to generation. Now, I love this because what is it? Psalm. Oh, what psalm is that? I said 45. Is it, 40, 145? is it 145? It might be the one where it speaks about. Uh, 45 is 145 came to me. 45 came to you. I'm not sure. It's the one where it speaks about. Uh, the Lord is gracious and slow to anger. The Lord is gracious and slow to anger. That one uh, that. One generation will speak to the next generation of your works and of your of your problem. I believe it's Psalm 45 that it speaks about. And this it reminds me of this. Isn't it Psalm 45? Somebody help me out here. Uh, it may be 145. I'm not sure, but I think it's around in that in that area. But this reminds me of that from generation to generation is your faithfulness. So you know, as one generation stands faithful, I love this because Apostle Aaron used to give this uh, this description all the time. And it, to me, it fits perfectly with what we're talking about right now. And it's that place of where when our kids are small, do you remember how we used to take it? And they, they'd love it when we do that. We would we bend down and let them sit up on our shoulders and then stand up and let them see you see, if you stop to really think about the action of putting them on our shoulders, then they are able to see higher and farther than what we can see. And even though they may be young, they've 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 been put to a place of being elevated and elevated for a purpose to 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 say, "Hey, I want to pour all that I am is Psalm 145. Thank you. It is 145. So, uh, Charisma, you were right. Psalm 145. Uh, so it's this place of, 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 if you will, 
uh, lifting up our kids, realizing that they will go farther than we than we did. But isn't that the idea? Don't we, you know, as parents, I remember when my daughter was little thinking, you know, I want to do all that I can so that my daughter is able to not deal with the same things that I dealt with. I want her to be past all of this. I want her to, I want to, I want, I want to, to try to teach her and allow her to learn in this place where she can excel far beyond what I've been able to. Well, this is exactly what this is, this is talking about. But the father is talking about us. See, this is our heavenly father speaking to us from generation to generation. I'm putting you on my shoulders, allowing you to see farther and deeper. Now, doesn't quite fit when we look at the heavenly father, but he because his his the knowing him is is just beyond expression, beyond understanding. But yet, in the same breath, what he's doing, he's lifting us up and allowing us to see from that place of his eyes, through his eyes, and beyond what we ever thought or could have imagined before, because he's he's established us in this in this place. You establish the earth, and it endures. Now, I want to take a time because this this sentence reads: "From generation to generation is your faithfulness. You establish the earth, and it endures." Now, uh, I love this because it it talks about the place of of the fullness of the Father and the enduring of of the world. Because I know we've talked a lot, and you may some many have heard about the you know or the perspectives, the eschatological perspectives of the end of the in the of the end of the world, and and many times we think that that, that, that there's going to be a total uh, destruction. There is going to be a tearing down of Babylon. I agree with that wholeheartedly. But over and over and over again, it speaks about in Scripture about the world without end, the world without end. And we see the same thing in here where it says that the earth endures. What the full understanding of that is, I'm still walking through myself. I'm still trying to see. And and I love I love this. I'll I'll, I'll bring that back up in a minute. To fulfill your decree, they stand until this day for all are your servants. To fulfill your decree, they stand until this day for all are your servants. What is the they that we're talking about there? The they that we're talking about is the earth. Is his faithfulness and the earth. Those are the they he's talking about there. And in in a place where he's fulfilling his decrees, fulfilling his word, he's bringing us to that place of saying, these two stand, my faithfulness and the earth stand until this day. Why? For all are your servants. Now, I don't want to get into the details of, of that right now specifically, but let me say this, the, the light of the Father has been given to everyone on the face of the earth. Anyone who has ever been born has received a portion of the light of the Father without fail. Because without that, then, then uh, there's just, there's a lot to say. There's a lot to say that. I just, I don't even go into the without that because it's, it's just, it's not even possible. But all are your servants. And it begins to speak about this place of, uh, I was reading something the other day, and it began to speak about Bura Pakiata. Give me just a second, y'all. It was talking about... How the world and everything that the Father has created was set up in such a way as to allowing everyone to see that the Father is the one who created all things, not only in the earth, but also in the cosmos. 
so that none are without proof that he exists, if you will. And it's funny because I've 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 noticed here lately, uh, just just kind of listening to some of the things that I hear uh, from a from a, a worldly perspective, because all of us do hear it from time to time. You're seeing people who are becoming more and more brazen about about the things of of the Father. I'm seeing uh, more and more brazen of the idea of well, religious religion doesn't work. Truth is, is that they're right. Religion doesn't work. I'm not. I hate religion. I hate religion. Religion is a set of rules that says we have to do this or that. And, and if we don't do it, then we're wrong. We're going to die. We're going to burn in hell. No, a loving father instructs his children. He teaches his children. And, and when we start to talk about the, the, uh, Father, should I say that? I think I need to skip past this. Uh, that I want to. I wanted to step into something that was really, really deep. And and uh, please, please forgive me, but I think I'm going to move past that because uh, this is not the place to release some things. There's 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 some things that I that require a, a little bit of an understanding ahead of time. And this this goes since this video goes out to a lot of people. I'm going to stop right there, but. Let me just say this, to fulfill your decree, they stand until this day for all, the Hebrew word hakol, that, uh, hakol, ki hakol, uh, I love that because it's, it's, he is a letter that speaks about the, the breath of the father. And so it's, it's a, it's a letter that speaks about the spirit of the Lord. Cough to me, it cough literally means the palm of the hand but to me it also means a mirror because the father showed me how when you put hand excuse me when you put water in your hand you can look into the water and see a mirror of your face by looking into the water through the palm of your hand well the water there represents his word and the palm of the hand represents that living letter cough or the hand of the father and and so I, I love this because with the word hakol, he is, is the is the Hebrew word for all, and he he's saying I have made and formed each one of you, and I am teaching you. I'm carrying you through this place. It's like, how do you want to say this? I don't want to say this, Father, because it's it's a it's a beautiful description. I want to explain here. Let's say that that a uh, well, actually funny enough that actually works. <laughs> kind of a silly story, but Holy Spirit just dropped this into me. Y'all remember the story of Pinocchio? <laughs> All right, I'm not going to get into the whole idea behind the the lies that Pinocchio told in the growing nose. That's not. I'm going to look at Pinocchio from a, a, another perspective. And holy, but I'll, so. Uh, don't blame me on this one. This this is Holy Spirit, and so it's going to seem kind of silly, but it fits. If you stop and think about it, it fits. But remember, Pinocchio was made by what Gazeppo or uh, um, Giuseppo or something like that, and and he was formed to be this this wooden boy. But this this wooden boy wanted to be like a real little boy. Well, part of that came because Giuseppo's heart was that he wanted a child he wanted a son as well and so as as you know when when giuseppo formed pinocchio he formed him made him out of his hands so you see cough speaks about the place of of the palms of the hands but it also speaks about the place of the things that we make the things that we do we do a lot with our hands and uh but what was going on in Giuseppo was the was really an intent. He had this intent as he was forming Pinocchio. He had this intent of wanting a little boy. And so his only way of being able to do that, at least according to the story, was that 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 he could form this little wooden boy. And so he does. He 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 forms this this little wooden boy and through this this place of of a miracle, of course Pinocchio turns into um, a little boy. 
And so it to me, if we stop to look at that from an ex, you know, from a from another perspective and from a spiritual perspective, we were kind of like the wooden boy. And Giuseppe was like the father. He formed us and created us and made us into his likeness and into his image. But the moment that he spoke his breath, he he breathed into our nostrils, we became a living soul. So in a sense, the intent, and see, it was out of what, the the reason why the father did this was because out of the intent of his heart, he wanted a family. He wanted sons and daughters. And so as just as Giuseppe, if you will, uh, and after he made through Pinocchio, I don't remember all the story because I don't remember the 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 place where they it flips where he stops being a wooden boy but starts being a real real boy because it's it's been many years ago that I've I've heard the story and thought about even the story. Truth be told, but there's there's a place where, if you will, the intention of Giuseppe's heart brought about the the Pinocchio becoming a little boy. So the same thing is true about us, but it's the spirit of the Lord that 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 really defines each one of us, because as the father speaks, I hope you guys are getting this. I I know today's been today's a little teachy, but or a little specific teaching uh, or or dealing more with the teaching aspect of. But I really hope you're getting this because uh, I just I'm I'm really sensing the, the spirit of the Lord on this as as we as we look at this, because. When he breathed into our nostrils, when we took and drew our first breath, our first breath in our life was was the breath of the Father. We brought in there. We brought in his breath. If you're ever, I was in the medical field for 22 years, and if you're ever at a birth, the 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 the, the only breath that take it is taken first is always in, always. It's never out. There has to be something in there first in order for something to come back out. And so when a child is born, the first breath is always in. And and so we breathe in the breath of the Father and we become a living soul. He breathes who we are. He breathes our identity into us. He speaks to us and shows us who we are. And then gives us an opportunity to become just like that. Funny enough, just like Pinocchio, Pinocchio kind of had to learn because because he started telling the little lies, right? He started doing some other things that that ended up making his his nose grow, but he had to walk through the understanding of being a, a real boy. So it's just like just like us during those years when we're growing up, we're learning. The Father is teaching us. He's he's showing us the the who we really are. Scripture even proves it where he says that uh, that we're all under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. So there's a place where there's a teaching that we go through, and we are his servants in that place. We are his sons. Let's keep going here. Had not your Torah been my preoccupation, that I would have perished in my affliction. Now, David's beginning to speak about the place of the realization. Had it not been for your Torah, remember that the Hebrew word Torah in English literally means teaching. So it means more than that. That's the beautiful thing about Hebrew. It's much deeper than just the word teaching. But the simplest way of putting it, had not your teaching, had not your words, Father, Had not the things that you've carried me through to be able to allow me to see who I am been my preoccupation, been my focus too. I've chosen to dig into your Torah. I've chosen to dig into your work. I've chosen to look to you. And I've chosen to, you see, now we've got got a witness. We got a witness of the word. The Father has spoken it, and we have, have said, yes, I want that teaching. I want that understanding. And and David goes on to say, had your had that teaching not been my preoccupation, then I would have perished in my affliction. I probably wouldn't have made it if it hadn't been for you, Lord. And I thank you so much. Never will I forget 
your precepts. The pikudecha. We talked about that one the other day when we were talking about the precepts to me are kind of like the, the place of, of walking through a mandate. It's kind of like as the Lord begins to teach us something, he begins to allow us an opportunity to learn and to walk through that. So when you see this word precepts, this is my definition, but I hope this helps. When you see the word precepts in scripture, he's speaking about that place of he's spoken his word. He's given his, his decree or his, his, he said his word. And there's a place of us learning what the depth of his word is. And as we walk through that, we are learning his precepts. Does that make sense? So uh, he says to us, let me give an example. Oh, Rebbe Kia, help me with an example, Holy Spirit. I want you to focus on my teachings. I want you to, to look into my word. That's the decree of the Lord. I want you to look into my word. And so for us, when we when we hear that, then immediately we begin to to dive into his word. But now I know I can say this, you know, I know you guys aren't the same way. I know all of you are are much better at this than I was. So so I'm so glad. But I had to I'm joking here uh, because I know we probably have all dealt with this. But as we start to look into his word, we we do it with fervor in the beginning and then it begins to wane a little bit. You all know what I'm talking about? where things kind of wane just a little bit and it kind of has to stir back up into us again. And then we're like, Oh, father, forgive me. I really want to look back into your work because I realized that what you've taught me before has been so beneficial and I've learned so much from that. I don't want to put this down. And so we go back and we start digging again. Well, you know, that happens to all of us. And the truth is, is that, that, that I, it's, it's funny because I've, I've seen that sometimes where the Lord will take me through these times where I'm digging heavily into his word. And, and as I do, then there's a time where things get a little bit quiet. I've learned to not be concerned over the quiet times. If I, if I remember the place where I'm wanting to learn his teachings, you see, I've, I've, I've begun to change a little bit in my perspective on this, not to say that, because, well, Father, help me out. Help me articulate this well, because I I feel like I'm struggling a little bit on the articulation of this. There was a time before where I, I you know, went back in the early days where I would count it as little or nothing and I would just forget or I'd let the cares of the world begin to um, overtake that time that I was spending. And, and then I would realize it had been a while, and I, I was so thankful for the things that he taught me when I was digging into his word that I'd begun to dig into his word again. And, and But through that trial and error of that, I, got, I began to get to a place where nowadays the Father has taken me through these things. And, and, and I've, I've asked this a lot lately, and, and the reason, that's the reason I'm bringing it up is the Father will begin to, to, to download this, this deep revelation about some things. And then I've been asking him for a little bit of time because I've what, what I mean by that is that I don't want to let even the littlest drop get by me. Father, when you speak your word, I want to make sure that I can get every drop that I can possibly get out of it at this moment. I want as 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 deep of an understanding as I can understand up to this point. And see, David goes on to talk about that because uh, he says this: "I will forget, I will not, never will I forget your precepts, for through them you have preserved me. Yours am I, yours am I. Save me, for your precepts have I sought." He goes on to say this, this place, I'm, oh, let me find it here. He says it a little bit later, I'll come back and I'll come back to it in just a minute. It's down towards the, the end of this. But he, he speaks about this place of, of getting the full extent 
of all that the father has for him. I, I can't remember now exactly what I was uh, going to say, but that's okay. Yours am I. Save me, for your precepts have I sought. Against me, the wicked hoped the wicked to destroy me. In other words, the wicked tried to destroy me in this place. But your testimonies, your edotecha, I contemplate. To every goal I have seen an end, but broad is your commandments exceedingly. This was the part I was wanting to get to. And what I was talking about, where I was talking about his precepts here uh, just a few minutes ago. Because again, those precepts being those things where he teaches us and we begin to walk through them. And just like now, where, where now I'm crying out for Father to give me some time. Why? Because I want to go back and meditate on those things that he's already given me. I have found that, that many times when I get an initial revelation, that initial revelation is so powerful that it, 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 it really allows for this, this, this excitement to begin to build inside, inside of me. And, but, but there, I know that there's so much more besides just that initial excitement. And many times the depth of revelation that the Father gives me happens because I choose to go back and begin to meditate on the things that he's talking about from before. Just like today, I was meditating on Lamed, uh, and I was specifically thinking about the living letter, Lamed. And, and I, was, I was thinking about it, the Lord reminded me, if I look at it from the perspective of the living letters, Lamed, of course, as we know, means learning or teaching and the place of authority. But to me, when I see the living letter Lamed, I always think about the heart of the Father. The Hebrew word lev begins, is, which is the Hebrew word for heart, begins with Lamed. And so I see myself walking into his heart. And inside of his heart is the fullness of his life, the mem, the waters. Because if you think about it from the place of the, the physical perspective, if I'm standing on the inside of a heart, then the blood of the Father is washing around all four sides of me, right? To top, bottom, right, and left. It's, it's flowing all around where I'm standing, standing in the center of his heart. So that mem, that 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 blood is a part of matter of fact, the Hebrew word uh for blood is dom, and uh it has it's dalit mem because it's the door into the fullness. And same thing is going on here with, with Lamed, because we've got the fullness and it's a door. It's a door to what? It's a door to becoming like my father, it's a door into seeing. The, the fullness of who my father is and becoming what I behold. It's a place where I'm I'm now choosing to where, where I have chosen to look like my father. I, I'm going to say that again. I have chosen to look like my father. You see, he's given us his word. But he's given us the ability to choose as well. Yes, by learning his word, we can become changed. But the more we spend time with him, the more we spend time in his word, the more we see the depth of his word, the deeper that we go into the understanding. And that's why, that's why these living letters have become so important to me. Because as the father began to teach me the living letters themselves, it, it, it opened up a door into his depths that I never imagined could be even possible. Because it takes the, the English word, the, the word that we can, we only give one definition to, because in English, a word means just that, that, that that's all. And now he's given us the, the Hebrew and the, the Hebrew word itself, and it's made up of living letters. And each one of those letters is a picture, and, and it shows an expression, not only of the meaning of what that Hebrew word is, but it also takes you into a deeper place. It shows you an even deeper level and a deeper meaning and a place where we can go deeper. Deep cries out to deep. What have I guess?
I contemplate to every goal I have seen an end, but broad is your commandment exceedingly. I know the way this this statement is, or this way this sentence is read, it sounds a little odd. But David says this, I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm contemplating that in the natural realm, there is a place where every goal will have a completion. Every goal will be brought to a completion in this world. But when we look into his word, it is a word that goes beyond. In other words, to, to his word and to his understanding, we will never come to an end. That's what this statement is saying. Matter of fact, there's a, in the Tahalim, there's a commentary that I want to read to you. But broad is your commandment exceedingly. This verse, which describes the limitless quality of God's teaching, God's Torah, itself alludes to numerous concepts, a few of which are briefly mentioned below, and I'm going to go through these. So it's saying that there is a limitless quality to the teaching of the God, of teaching of, of the Father, um, but it opens up additional doors. Listen to this. This is the first one. Although some commandments seem to have been given for a specific reason, they may actually serve many purposes, not necessarily obvious to us. So when the, when the scripture says, thou shalt not kill, it seems like it's only for a specific purpose. But what the, what the, the sages are saying here is look beyond. This may go beyond just the actual, uh, the actual sin of, of murder. Because the, doesn't the scripture go on to say that if we hate our brothers, then it's just a, it's akin to, to murder? And, and so there's there's a place where, you know, when if if oh boy, if if I realize that each and every one of us are an expression of the father, and each and every one of us are necessary in the fullness of who the father is, then how could I cut off my big toe on my foot? How could I even think about do that? Paul talked about that. How can the hand say to the foot, I have no need of you? Well, my, my body needs my feet because my feet are what carry me from one place to another. My, my, my feet need my hands to be able to complete the work that the Father has, has called us to do. You know, Paul goes on to say, how can the head say to the rest of the body, I have no need of you? Because the body moves as a result, or the head moves as a result of the body, but the body, the head controls what the body does. So, so you know, this, this, this scripture and this commandment goes even deeper than that. And the truth is, is that that is one of the key things that I, I, I know that the Father has, has given for me to, to, be, to speak about and to encourage everyone about. And that is the place of looking beyond. From a Western mentality, we've always been tied to this place of, of, of saying that Scripture is only, that only means just this one thing. But the word of God is, 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 is living, and, and, it's, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Not only does it divide up between those things, but if we look at this scripture right here that we're talking about, it also goes beyond that. It takes his commandments. His words are exceedingly great. There is no an end to his words. There's no end to the understanding of his words. All right, that was the first one. Every desire can eventually be filled except the desire for the teaching of the Lord, except for the desire of Torah knowledge. Every other desire, every earthly desire, I said that just a few minutes ago, every earthly desire can be filled except for the desire for the Torah knowledge or for the, the teaching of the Lord. And he's right. I've said this before in our classes. We can we could spend eternity looking into the Hebrew living letters, just the letters themselves. Truth is, we could look into Aleph and spend an eternity looking into Aleph and still never see or find the depth. Every time we learn more about Aleph, we'll find more that there, the more that we didn't know. 
we'll find we'll find deeper perspectives that we never thought possible. All other goals are achieved only upon completion. However, each step in Torah or each step in his teaching and his mitzvos, his his commands, that word's the word for commands there. But remember, the mitzvos of the Lord, the decrees of his mitzvos are or the decrees of his commandments are the loving instruction of a father. I, I, I've been really trying to, to speak this a lot, to realize that, that the, the commands that we, we've always heard for doesn't mean it's do this or do that. From, from even a Jewish perspective, from a Hebrew perspective, when when the word when we see the word mitzvos, we see the place of the loving instruction of a father. He's teaching us. It's not a boom, boom, boom. It's a, it's a teaching place. So each step in Torah and mitzvos, which can never be completed, represents a goal and achievement in and of, in and of itself. Let me read that again. All other goals are achieved only upon completion. However, each step in Torah and mitzvot, which can never be completed, remember, his word goes beyond, represents a goal and an achievement in and itself. So when in the place with the intent of our heart, we choose to see a word, just like the word, like when it speaks about the place of uh, give, giving. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over. When it comes to the place of giving, that that when we give to one another, when we give of 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 the word, when we give of our time, when we give of the things that the Father and help someone else, that that there is a completion and a goal in doing that because we know that we've we've heard the word of the Lord and we've completed it. But is there more to do? Absolutely. Can we do more? Absolutely. Every striving has a point at which one can say that the goal has been reached. But Torah, which teaches us how to use every aspect of our lives, is as extensive as life itself. Let me repeat that one more time. Every striving has a point at which one can say that a goal has been reached. But Torah, the teaching of the Lord, which teaches us how to use every aspect of our lives, is as extensive as life itself. That one messed with me because, especially when he said every aspect of our life, the Father is teaching us in every aspect of our life, from the most mundane, from the most typical to the to the to the most beautiful and the, the deepest expression. He he wants to be a part of, of that. So Father, oh, Rebekah, I thank you that today, it's funny because, huh, although I don't know why I just thought about this, but I did. I heard the Lord say, you realize what you did today was exactly what this, this, this living letter Lamed speaks about. You know, I told you guys that today was going to be more teaching. <laughs> As it should have been, Lamed talks about teaching and learning, right? And it's funny, I didn't even think about it until just now. But Father, I thank you that in this place of your word, that Father, you are teaching us. Father, we choose to look at your word as that place of the loving instruction of you. And that that even in your commands, in your mitzvahs, Father, that you're teaching us how to be more like you. Father, we choose to do those things. We choose to hear your word for us. And in doing so, Father, you you begin to show us that expression of who we are in you and who you are in us. Father, your Lamed. Your teaching. We thank you for it. We choose to do these things that you've asked us to do. We choose. Why? Because we love you. Because we love you, Father. 
thank you for the depth and the expression of your word. Thank you for the place where you're teaching us the deep of the expression of who you are. Father, as we look deeper into your word, we're looking deeper into your face. We're looking deeper into your presence. Which, by the way, we're, by the way, guys, the Hebrew word for the for presence is panim. Panim is also is also the Hebrew word for face. So, Father, as we look into your presence, as we look into your face, Lord, we choose to get the deepest part that we can understand at this moment, knowing, Father, that, that, that as we grow and as we continue to grow in you, you will show us even deeper perspectives that we never could have imagined from this point or from this moment in time, because you've shown us new ways to see. We've shown us depths that we never, we, 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 we showed us depths that we, we thought we could never reach. So thank you, Father, for your teaching. Thank you for your word. And thank you for the place that you have called us to be in you. Blessings and shalom. For those of you that are on the recording, blessings and shalom. Uh, we will be going over the living letter Mem next week. Uh, but we actually are moving into now a time of engaging with one another. So if you'd like to be a part of this, uh, the link is in the uh, description below in YouTube, and you'll be glad. We'd love to have you join us here in the class uh, because we, we, we get to spend some time in being able to engage with this word that we've been speaking of today. So join us then.